Lovely woodwork down here. My fingers are turning blue. <laughs> I get a little more impressed with this boat with everything I see. It really is marvelous. This is unbelievable. I gotta come up with another word. Awesome. I am really amazed at this boat. Oh, it feels so good on my back. Hi there, this is Captain Q. Join us as we travel hither and yon to show you some great deals on some really interesting boats and maybe learn just a little bit with each one. Where's that color from? Hey, Captain! <laughs> How do you like this? I like it. Is this cool or what? This is the four preps singing us into a meeting with our boat today, which happens to be a romance, romance, romance. The Catalina 380. <laughs> so what's that song about? It's about an island called uh, Catalina in the Santa Catalina waters off of uh, Los Angeles area. This happens to be a Catalina boat. You don't hear the word Catalina a whole lot unless you bump into one of these puppies. And this happens to be a 38-foot Catalina. Back in 1962, Frank Butler, who was then about, uh, about 30, ordered a little boat from a man, and the man did not come through, didn't build the boat for him. So Frank said, give me the boat, I'll build it. Frank had such a good time doing that, that he bought the little company. Wow. And a couple of years later, he pulled it all together, renamed it, and Catalina Yachts was born. In his time, he managed to build 85,000 boats. Wow. The largest boat manufacturer in America. Frank's approach to life was to make the customer happy, and he would himself quite often contact owners who had warranty problems of any sort. And they were always amazed to hear Frank on the phone. This is an unusual boat. We're not going to call this a racer cruiser or a cruiser racer. Uh, we're gonna call this a cruiser cruiser. Well, if you look right here, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Ben Lexan. Do you ever hear of Ben Lexan? No. Ben Lexan was an Australian designer who designed an America's Cup boat that won the America's Cup. And there's a famous picture of him standing on his wing that nobody had ever seen before uh, on this 12-meter boat in Newport after the races and drinking champagne. This really has, it's got some uh, nice profiles to it, so you might get some actual lift off of this piece. You're going to get the stability uh, and the, of, of, the, of this extended portion back here. Um, so it's going to be a fairly stable boat. Plus, as you'll see, she's quite beamy. Rather than have a seven-foot draft, which you could order with this boat. You could order a stock keel with a seven foot draft. You're, you have now five feet. She's 21 years old and uh, probably not due for a uh, walnut blast yet, but I'm getting close. If I were to buy this boat myself today, I'd put it in the water and go sailing for the next couple of years probably. The through hull fittings, they're all flush. Yeah, that seems unusual compared to what we've seen. Well, for example, the boat next door here, you see this sort of thing. And you might say, well, that's, how can that bother the length of all this boat pounding through the water? Well, you've got enough of them in there and it starts to add up. They put a three-bladed solid prop on here. And this prop is going to drive you through any kind of uh, heavy, heavy current with no problems. There is a, a line cutter on here. Those are so sharp. And there's a couple of zincs which have been pretty well wasted. I'd say we'd probably replace those before... Uh, we launched this this spring. Okay, and here we have a nice semi-balanced spade rudder. Uh, and by that we mean that when this, here's the rudder shaft coming down in like so. And when this rudder turns, when you want to turn the boat, uh, rather than forcing the whole thing against the water, this is going to pick up some of it and help push the rudder. It's not equal balance, it's just a little extra help for the steering. It looks a lot like the uh, Beneteau 461, right? I'll take your word for it. I think it is, yeah. Okay, it probably is. Probably very close. But she's also got a nice shape, a little bit of a Jim Taylor, a little bit of a whale tail here, not as much where the fullness is through the center line, but it's also very deep. When the boat heels over, this is going to stay in the water and you're still going to be able to steer the boat. So that is really nice. And uh, looking forward here at the boat, even though she has full bilges, uh, which gives you a lot of storage and capacity room inside, uh, it's not flattened up like the Cal 40s. Um, 
There's a nice smooth run coming back here. Reminds me of that uh, Russian submarine in... Uh, um, Hunt for Red October? Hunt for Red October. Something about the, the look of this thing under here, but I like this, this is nice. One other thing they do tend to do too with these wings is that they find that they act as sort of flopper stoppers. What does that mean? A flopper stopper. If the boat's rolling a little bit, let's say you're just even in a mooring, and the boat's more, uh, 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 just rolling back and forth with waves going by or power boats going by, uh, those will slow down the rate of boat rotation around the center line. So it won't, it won't it, it's not just gonna hit a, have a wave and go like that. It's gonna hit a wave slightly and, and it'll be dampened down with those. My fingers are turning blue. Oof, <laughs> <laughs> The temperature is a happy 32 degrees. Randy, right. you coming on up? Yeah. Come on up, pal. Oh, thanks. This is, oh, first of all, you're gonna know we're not gonna freeze anymore. That's you, you can come, you can come. It's toasty in here. This is a two-part cover with a custom metal frame that comes with the boat. This is all part of the deal. 1997, this boat won the uh, mid-size cruising boat uh, award granted by Cruising World magazine. If you're offshore sometime and you get the big wave that you're not expecting, yep. uh, it fills the cockpit, right? That can happen. You can fill this cockpit. Instead of a scupper, you have a big hole in the back of the boat. There's a seat that will go right across here so the helmsman has a place to sit, and you can see it sitting on the side of the, of the, of the combing right now just for the winter. But <clears throat> all the water is just going to rush right out of here in probably about 10 seconds, 10, 15 seconds. It's going to be very fast, so you will drain the cockpit. There are ancillary uh, scuppers uh, off to each side of the cockpit to take care of rainwater in the meantime. There's a plate right underneath here, just so you know that where you, where you would put an auxiliary tiller. If something should happen to your steering mechanism, it can go right in, in here. You can pull this plate off and you'll find the head, the top of the rudder shaft, and somewhere on the boat there'll be a funky looking handle that you'll steer the boat with to get yourself home. You've got the metal works here for the full bimini. There's also a dodger, uh, a rig that comes with the boat and including a fly that connects the dodger to the uh, bimini back. So, and then there's a complete set of enclosure sides for this. So this whole space can turn into a giant waterborne house. The fun things here too that they're putting on boats now, a lot of People like to come back and sit alongside the, the helmsman. This is just nothing more than a padded seat. Uh, you put your butt right there. Underneath all these seats, there's some sort of storage. And in this case, this the, I could stand up down there. The uh, uh, Captain Q measuring stick would probably go all the way to the bottom of that. Propane tank, one of the propane tanks. And if we look over on the other side, we'll find another one. Uh, I, there's so much right, right where I'm standing. This boat is really uh, awesome. Behind the uh, handhold here on the Edson pedestal uh, is all the instrumentation, all the ray marine, uh, wind, apparent wind, direction, speed, depth, and so forth, plus a GPS screen just so you can uh, plot your course. And of course, the ubiquitous and a highly necessary Ritchie compass. Engine controls, there's, there's dual engine controls, and this is kind of nice to see because um, on this particular boat, uh, as opposed to a lot of sailboats you find, you can read all these. They're all clear as a bell. The glass is clear as a bell in it. And you can see the actual bilge pump down here, the whale gusher, it's called, with a yellow uh, arm coming out of there. As I'm looking out aft, a really nice set of Ocean Marine Systems um, davits for the dinghy. And there's an inflatable dinghy that goes with the boat. Everybody likes light. So if you can see down there, there's a little hatch kind of deal. When we open up, there it is. And that hatch, when you open it up, we'll give you light and ventilation. Let's, let's just test the length of this thing. It looks pretty nice. Oh, yes. This is very nice. Any excuse to lie down. Any excuse. <laughs> oh, it feels so good on my back. We're on a 38-foot boat, and we did look at a 39-foot Bristol, which was a foot longer. But this feels like we're in a boat twice the size. The older designs are beautiful. They're great fun to sail. They're really pretty. The new stuff is uh, huge. Randy, I've managed to squeeze my way up underneath this cover. Just amazed at the beam on it, which is a little over 12 feet. Just 
oodles of hatches for air and light in the boat. Uh, one thing I'm sitting here too, looking down at the uh, side port lights, they are frameless, uh, kind of in a, a Hinkley tradition type of thing, um, where there's no metal frame out here to corrode or rust or get in the way. You will not find one splinter of wood, as they say, on the boat, um, up on, on top side here. A little wood down the rail here is just there to hold on to the uh, canvas work, but there's nothing that comes with the boat. And the idea is to make this boat uh, as simple to operate and maintain. Full-length handrail right here, it's stainless steel, uh, running right along the top of the cabin. I'm right at the mast step area now. They're designed to gather the lines, as we've seen before on other boats, coming off the mast and then running aft to the spin lock uh, brakes back by the winches on the cabin top. And we see a solid uh, bang uh, right there, and that is operated with a, a, a four-part tackle. We're down below now, and I'm looking around here, uh, right at the base of the companionway, at uh, the amount of extra space and room in this boat over, and I'm sorry to bring up the poor old Bristol 39, but this is like a 50-foot boat we're in. Now, I will say this, this boat has a 32-foot waterline, and historically, that's pretty close to the length of a waterline on, oh, say, an old Columbia 50-footer. Lovely wood, lovely wood work down here. There's such a nice finish touch to through the uh, lockers here. Look how nicely these open up. Look at the size of the counter space. What do we like here? Oh, nice deep sinks. Big sinks. Put your feet in there and wash them. They're really deep, really deep. Look at the size of that. that, that that's, that's the depth of the sink, at least. And it's located almost amidships, uh, center line, uh, which means that when the boat heels over, the water's probably not going to slop out. You have a little cutting board here, and or you've got some other things. And look what's right in there. Yeah, a little trash. little trash receptacle. And you can access that trash receptacle right out of this locker, like so. How neat and tidy that is. I would say that could be your pot and pan storage. But there, it has a, uh, a refrigeration unit in here, uh, electric refrigeration unit. There is a front entry door here. The door is open right now for the winter, but um, this is very nice. And up here, in case you have some glassware you want to store or mugs, those will live right in there inside these, these little verti vertical fiddles, we'll call those. Up underneath all of these are blinds. So, and they have a little piece of Velcro on it, and that little Velcro will come sit down on these tabs. That little piece right there, that little piece of Velcro, will come down and hold the blinds just like so. Now just look at the overhead while we're in here. Five uh, opening hatches just in the, in the main salon itself. When you come down these nice, uh, some grippy sort of uh, companionway steps, you come down to a, um, a, almost a rubbery textured type of flooring down here. The nice thing about this is that often it will be wet from moisture coming through rain or wet boots or grease and fat from the kitchen and the galley there. So. This will be easily cleaned, so it'll be easy to clean and it'll keep you sure-footed. And while I'm sitting here, just take one little peek here. There are two uh, 8D uh, batteries. I'm gonna show you an engine here, Rande. We have an engine here, right under these steps. It's all nicely insulated, sound insulated, and it's a Yanmar 40 horsepower diesel. Uh, clean and tidy as can be. You can look down to the bilge underneath that and you'll see it's dry and free of slime and oil swimming around. That was never something we could do on the PB. <laughs> PB always had a well lubricated build. <laughs> anyway, you want to work on it. It it's, could be more in your lap if you wanted to. And you'll see when we get into the after cabin that there's another hatch that opens up and exposes the back side of this engine too. So a, a pretty nice design. I get a little more impressed with this boat with everything I see. Uh, we're going to put the Captain Q measuring stick on, and boys, <laughs> you can't believe how comfortable this is. There's not too much you have to add to this boat. Here are all your 12-volt distribution panel and your 120 over here. No that, radar here? Uh, there's no radar in the boat that I believe. Uh, there's a radar, good radar reflector, so one thing that might be missing on it, but if you don't go out when it's dark or foggy, you're okay. <laughs>
So, great little library area here, good working area. All right, Randy, I'm on my knees. This is another form of reverence, okay? We thank you so much for this bountiful harvest. <laughs> These are the, the bilge pump uh, receptacles here. Here's a, a, a float switch for an automatic bilge pump. Look at the size of the keel bolts here. Not only the size of it, but look how clean and neat they are. And look how clean this bilge is. Uh, it's, it's one of the cleaner ones we've seen. It's right up there in the top three or four for sure. Did you know a bilge could be white? No. They, <laughs> I don't know where they got that. This is for the uh, chain plates up on deck to hold the mast up. Those are pretty and beefy. They're very beefy. And uh, the polish and the fit and finish to it, it's just, it, it's sort of hard to believe this boat is 20 years old. It really is marvelous. You've got a little settee berth over here. It's just a really, really nice um, cruising weekender, long week. Uh, and there'd be no reason not to scoot down offshore, go down to the Bahamas with this boat, especially with that, that uh, low draft keel. Now, Randy, this is so tidy and neat up here. I'm not going to try and clamber up into this section. I know that's going to oh, break really? your heart. I like the little uh, sink to just, you know, kind of brush your teeth in the morning. Exactly, morning. Yeah. exactly. Have a drink of water at night or uh, top up your scotch and water. <laughs> One last shot here. And a nice uh, little vanity. Uh, again, the woodwork and the finish is, is really quality, really well done. And those are two transducers for the depth sounder and the speedometer. It's right handy, no problems getting to that. If you get a little seaweed on the speedometer, you can clear it off. Just pull up the plug, put a plug in, and you're all set. This is a pretty amazing thing we're about to see, and that is a uh, after cabin on a 38-footer. Now, I'm six foot one. I have, you're not gonna believe this, I've got six inches of headroom over me right now. Now, of course, it drops down here because this is the part of the bridge deck and the, and the uh, part of the cockpit. It just leaves you a ton of room in here. And how happy can I be? Now, remember what we saw when we were up on deck? Look at that. Wow. Now, that, I, <laughs> they can hand me a beer down here. Or I can hand them a beer up there. Uh, I've got tons of ventilation. Uh, I'm going to have some extra light coming in here. I don't even, I almost don't notice this piece like so. So that's really quite nice. Now, you think this is a Captain Q effort? I, th I think we only have one measuring stick with okay, us. Okay, we'll, we'll get the measuring stick up and uh, let's just see how this works out. So I swing myself over to the bunk. Now the first thing notice, my head doesn't really hit anything. It's not like I'm trying to sit up underneath this. It's just, it's the little items in, in yacht design that make all the difference in the world. Little inches or two here or there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this, this is unbelievable. Uh, I, I'm, I'm tired of using unbelievable. I've got to come up with another word, but this is really pretty amazing. Rollover room here. You see, I'm not going to hit anything, even this low spot here, which is part of the steering gear, I think, coming down. And uh, I don't feel claustrophobic. I've got a window here. These also, too, act as escape hatches. In, in the worst of circumstances, something happens forward. You've got to get out of here. This will take a whole human body up and out. You can, it'll push open the, the hatch outside. So there's a real plus to that. Uh, so are you voting uh, head first, looks like, or feet first? We have that question again. You know what, this time, I'm going to say, I think probably either direction. But we'll be interested to hear what our, our, our followers think because they had a lot of opinions before. This is remarkable. And right beside me, and you notice when I sat up, my head didn't hit anything. Yeah. Concussion-free. What's that? Concussion-free. Concussion-free, exactly. And if I did hit something, it's either going to be plastic or there's no sharp edges here. I am really amazed at this boat. This is truly unique. This is another uh, little section that will just pop open, and that's the back end of the engine. Captain. Yeah. What, what are you doing? I'm just having a little shower here. You won't believe the little shower room I found. Not so little. Um, Remember the Captain Q measuring stick, uh, 6'1". I have this much room on top of my head over the 6'1". Somebody was asking recently, can you find a boat with more headroom for me? I think we found the boat for them. A uh, hot and cold shower, handheld shower head. There's a sump uh, pump switch in there, so when you're finished, you hit the sump pump, and whatever water is collected down here on the floor pan will be sucked right out. 
So this is this is really amazing. What, what's really, dangling behind your head there? Dangling behind my head. That's a light fixture. It's been taken apart for the winter. This again is huge too. Look at the, look at look how much room I have in here, just to swing around. And if I want to get out of here, here's the door out, right? Or if somebody from the forward cabin needs to come back and use this, they can come right back in. That's there. your favorite, the two door. It is a two door, but this is even a different, better two door. All the plumbing for the exhaust lines that go to the holding tank and to the exhaust are all two and a half inch plastic, solid plastic, which means it's going to not be permeable, gas permeable. Like most, almost every flexible uh, plastic or rubber line is going to be gas permeable. That means that the smells from the holding tank will eat their way through that hose and you come on a boat and you can, you just can't pass it up. It's just there and it's not very pleasant. So this boat, even right now in the winter, is still very sweet. You can go on other boats with other systems and even the dead of winter, you'll think somebody just flushed the loo two seconds ago. So this, they've taken care of that, that issue right here with that. Once again, we lucked out finding an, an interesting boat. This is a little newer than we usually like, uh, but uh, there were some attributes to it that were really fantastic. In fact, this boat had a really great layout. And unfortunately, and just as we were wrapping up, we get a call saying it's been sold. We found uh, two others on the market at the same exact price. Okay. I think there was one out in the Caribbean that was a little cheaper. This is a super cruising boat uh, for her size for me, and I really like the uh, I like the comforts of it. Obviously, it's a 10, right? We know it's a 10, because that puppy's going to float like crazy. i got to give this thing uh, another good six points on top of the 10. This is a 16 boat, and I think that's a lot for me. For the newer boats um, and a lot of you may like this a whole lot more i hope you do and i hope you find one just like it i enjoyed seeing it and i love the ergonomics of the uh, of the design work this was this was well thought out if you like what you see please hit the subscribe button and if you want to be notified when the next one comes out please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. So we're having too good a time doing these things, so uh, you can hit the bell or not. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episode. A little bit early. It's pretty cool. Previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now, and I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram's not a place. <laughs> <laughs>